everything collapses and then I gotta wipe the inside and you know, then I gotta run out and you know what I mean? You're like, you're doing a lot of stuff. And if you make a mistake <coughs> in any part of it, like let's say the outside looks super sweet but the inside was like totally blown out because I, I just put too much light in there, then you're gonna have to do it all again. So you're gonna have to come out, you have to do the side and the front and you gotta go through the rickety porch again, you gotta go inside and you know, so there's a lot of room for mistake in a single shot that um, I just don't think it's really worth doing anymore. I mean, unless it's a, a very simple sh um, setup. Um, but for typically stuff like this, I, I just think that, that stacking is just so much easier. And I think hopefully that video showed how simple it was. I mean, even if you don't have Photoshop, there are, um, there are free applications that are actually designed for star trails but they do the exact same thing. They'll, they'll do a light and blending mode. And you can download one of those programs for free and just load your, your um, light paint images in there and it would composite it. Because I know not everybody has Photoshop. Um, but if you do, and if, uh, if that looks fairly easy, just changing one, one blending mode and, and compositing your shot, then I think stacking is really the way to go because like again with this image I could do one picture and all I have to worry about is this you know the right side of the building and then I do another picture where all I have to worry about is the inside of the building you know what I mean so you're 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 limiting the, the amount of mistakes that can happen and typically you got to get out of these situations fast because the police are on the way <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so, so this, this particular shot, I want to say, uh, looking at it, I'm going to guess that there was something for the front, the side, the interior, possibly this other window, and then another shot for the foreground just to get the, the tumbleweeds. Um, and this one I do remember having to mask out the stars because if any amount of time goes by when you're doing those, then your stars are going to move. And they won't be nice trails, they'll be like dot 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 because there's you know minutes have gone by so it's a little bit more work but um yeah well yeah you could just say there's more stars out but um so anyway those are the two methods single shot and stacking does that kind of make sense to everybody as to what the differences are and, and why you might choose one or the other okay uh look there's bonsai rock Yay. <laughs> um so this image just just side note, we actually, this is uh, Lake Tahoe, um, this stupid rock, I don't know why it's so popular, but any given day you go down there, there'll be people literally from all over the world. It's like some iconic thing, and it's, it's like a piece of granite with a little twig at the top. Um, but anyway, everybody shoots it, so I was like, well, what can I do to, to make it cool? And so I have a friend that's a scuba diver, and he actually, did some scuba diving in Tahoe. I think it was in the middle of freaking winter. Like it, he was nuts, and he had uh, underwater strobes, like flashes, and so he would swim around and, and flash. And it wasn't it, it it just wasn't working. Like it didn't. The lights were just too you know just flash boom on and off, and it, it didn't look that good. And so, at some point during the night, he actually lost his his dive mask. And so this shot was a result of him swimming around with his flashlight under the water, like looking for his mask, which is still to this day. Well, maybe you guys pulled it out in the, in the cleanup. But um, yeah, so this was just, I, I left the shutter open judging on the star trails in the shot. I'd say that's probably five or six minutes exposure. And that was just him swimming around looking for his mask. And I was like, oh, that is so cool. So whatever, a happy accident. Um, so the first thing that, that I typically do when I, when I do a light, um, a light painting is I'll check for my ambient exposure. And basically what that means is just I, I want my frame to be fairly dark um, when I take the picture because I, I'm not going to do any light painting. I'm just going to shoot and I just want to see where the ambient is so that I can keep it nice and dark so that when I add the light, that's going to be the primary light. Uh, like I said, moonlight um, is it can be pretty cool. So some ambient can be okay. Obviously, you can't really light paint when it's when it's bright. Um, uh, although I have, <laughs> believe it or not, done some light painting in the middle of the day. But I was underneath a, you know, um, uh, we were at some 
old abandoned ranch and I was kind of in this thing and it was dark and it, and it, and it still worked. But um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll check the ambient exposure. Uh, place to start, this is really hard. This is just uh, a guess. I mean, obviously it's gonna depend on how much light is at where you're shooting to know. But I mean, I'm just saying, you know, start at F10, go to your lowest ISO possible. That could either be 50 or 100 or uh, whatever it is. And then I try and give myself as much time as possible to work. So I'm gonna say, go to 30 seconds right off the bat. That gives you 30 seconds to play with the light. And uh, if it's too bright at 30 seconds, then you, you can either increase your f-stop, drop your ISO more if for some reason you weren't already at the lowest, um, or you could even put a, an ND filter on and cut the light even more. Um, use a shutter release or a two second delay. We kind of already touched on that, the shutter release. Basically the whole point of that is just to get your hands off the camera so you're not shaking it. Um, Things to try. So um, I know some of you are reading that advanced tip and you're going, man, this guy's such an ass. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that, that can be really interesting is, is narrowing the light. And you'll see me doing that with the flashlight. And that can be done uh, with a piece of like cardstock or tin foil, or you can use your hand. But if you've got a light source that's um, you know, expanding out and kind of flooding your scene and you want more control, you just want to narrow that, that light source, kind of like with a snoot. Um, and like I said, I can, you can even just use your hand to do something like that. Uh, if you're trying to light paint a glossy surface, you're really going to want to, like if I was trying to paint glass or you know, some kind of just highly reflective surface. If you point a flashlight right at a highly reflective surface, it's just gonna put a big, nasty looking hot spot in it. Um, so you're really gonna wanna bounce your light. So that might be something where you, you know, you have your flashlight and it's pointed and I use this awesome poster here. You've got your flashlight and you're, you're shining it at your white card and then the reflection is going to see that big, um, that big light source. So it's, it's like you're bouncing it or using a soft box or something like that. I um, don't light paint a lot of glossy stuff, but if you do, um, like I said, it's probably not gonna work real well to just point the light right at it. Um, use off angle lighting. This is a big pet peeve for me. Like. Um, you know, like the look where you, you shoot with your on-camera flash, if anybody, you know, has ever done that and you get just those horrid shadows that it's just like, oh, look, you shot with an on-camera flash. Like, it's like the most unflattering light ever. And I, if you're light painting and, and let's say this laptop is my computer, if I'm right here and I'm light painting right behind my camera, then the camera's not really going to see, you're not going to get that cool dimension and it's like you know shooting at midday or something when everything's just you know flat or gross it's just you really want to go off angle and shoot at low angles because you know the lighting always looks good when it's low like when the sun's low in the sky it just you cast those long shadows it's beautiful um, so you want to kind of mimic that um, with your light painting um, you can combine painting with light with flash uh, this particular image that I did here um, we were playing with a fog machine and so the, the main image was light painted and then of course we also set things on fire which was fun. Typically we'll let me set things on fire in the focus groups. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Not after that one time. Um, but then we had one uh, speed light in the back and we just did a short little pop and that's um, what let the definition of the uh, fog come in. Because if you just try and light paint, you know, 30 seconds of fog moving around, it's just gonna be a blur. You're not gonna see any texture or detail. You gotta freeze it for that one moment. Um, so that's kind of fun to play with. And and that just really takes me to the next tip, is just have fun, experiment. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, you know, it's um, it's just a learning process. And, and the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. And I think that's my last slide. I think we can kind of get into the live look. And, and yeah, if anybody couldn't read that, it says if you're shooting with a friend, say, 
hey, can you look at this? And then you blast them in the face with the brightest light you have. And people have done that to me, and I swear I've seen like, I can see like the outline of the speed light for like two days afterwards. It was awesome. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. Um, so I'm going to unplug the computer here. We're going to plug in the camera. I am going to. I think we're done with this. Can I shut it? <laughs> well, we know uh, the password now. Oh, that's right. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Okay, I really apologize for that, guys. Sorry. Kippy's going to buy you all dinner. Can you see if I sit here? Yes. Okay, so uh, all that was just to basically get my camera to talk to the uh, to the projector so you can basically see what's on the back of my camera here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you know, so I can see my menu screen. Menu screen. Yeah, can you light paint my... There we go, okay. So let's just do my settings that I talked about in the video. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily set this to F10. We're gonna go 30 seconds. I got my ISO set to low, which is 50. I'm not gonna be able to focus because it's dark, so I'm gonna put my light on that guy real quick and I'm gonna focus. Okay. Once you're focused, if you're not gonna move anything, just turn your, turn off your autofocus, just to save yourself the hassle. So I'm putting my lens on manual focus. Make sure it's still focused. Okay. Did you say center weight focus? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's it's just, it's on, oh, whoops. Oh, that blue light's gonna be a problem, but that's okay. So we're just gonna do a 30 second exposure and we're gonna see how much, how much that blue light is going to ruin my shot. So yeah, your, your first exposure, you're just trying to get your, get rid of the ambient light in the, in the, uh, in the room. For a shot like this, I, I really don't need any ambient light. We may be able to not get around it just because we have this giant projector. So where's my image? Show up now. How about now? There it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, well, we're not going to be able to get rid of that, but that's okay. You guys get the point. We're going to pretend that that's moonlight. Uh, it's kind of some ambient moonlight. It's a, it's a really nice big blue softbox. I could get rid of it all the way if I went to a shorter exposure and maybe uh, dropped my my f-stop down, but for the point of this demo, I don't think, oh, well, Kippy's got some kind of madness going on over here. No, I don't think I can set it up right to block your- Oh, it, it's your fine. Light, so. Thank you, though. Never mind. You're awesome. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it just a little bit. Let's go to F, mm -hmm. let's go to F13. Let's drop it to 25 seconds. And we'll take it again real quick. Because I turned manual focus off, I can just click and shoot. Uh, if you had left your manual focus on, because it's so dark, your camera's gonna sit there and go zzz, 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 and try and focus and really irritate you. So we're just gonna take one more shot here. I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic. It'll be a slightly darker moon. Okay, yeah, we're not getting rid of it. That's fine. So let's let's call that ambient dialed in. So from here on out, all my exposures are gonna be the same because nothing in this room is really gonna change. Um, so we're just gonna leave it at 25 seconds at F13. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just do, um, I'll try and do a one shot in 30 seconds and see if I can see what it comes out like. And then I'll, I'll do a, a stacked version and then uh, I'll put that together and throw it up online so you can see that too. But um, so right now I'm gonna put the mic down and I'm gonna try and do a, a, see if I can paint the whole scene in 25 seconds and try and make it look somewhat decent. Um, like I said, the temptation is really strong for people to sit right here and just paint from back here.
but you're gonna fill all your shadows be, because you're you know you're coming at the same angle as the lens. So just by going you know this direction, you're gonna give your scene so much more dimension. So let's see what I can come up with here. And I'm just going to kind of hold my hand over the light just to kind of not hit it with the full power of this light because it's ridiculously bright. And I'm just going to come over here, maybe hit the front, maybe not quite as much. So it's kind of like a, and then I'm going to get back here. Sorry if I blind anybody. And that's 25 seconds. That's not anywhere near enough time to probably. You know, so so here's the thing with the single versus the stacked. I might like a certain part of that, but I'd really like to see, sorry guys, I'd really like to see, you know, more rim light defining these shapes here. This is all just a muddy, dark mess, can't really tell what that is. Um, so what would you do if you were stacking it? Would you so take that was, one and then move yeah, it and take another picture, but go to the other side? And absolutely. A more? So, so yeah, if I were stacking it, what I would do is, you know, I, I would save this one. It's fine. You might use it for something. But when you're stacking, I can use that whole 25 seconds to really kind of refine each area of the, the shot. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do I'm going to do a 25 second, and I'm just going to try and put some rim light on things as one of my stacked elements. So let's do that. I have familiarized myself with the edge of the stage. Do you want somebody to press your shutter? Um, no, I think I'm good. This is really fun to watch when he's trying to run through an old B25 bomber building. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I apologize if I'm blinding anybody. Hopefully I'm not in the shot or the light source itself isn't in the shot. I don't think I will be. So again, this is, I'm just trying to put some rim light on the back side of it. Let's see if I did any, what I did. So that, that could be a cool, a cool element. So yeah, um, I hear somebody saying blinkies and yeah, yeah I, did, I did blow that out. But the other stuff looks pretty cool. I like the folds in the cloth, the way those look. They're kind of a, just kind of an interesting kind of textured kind of thing. So again, um, I, would, I would just do a bunch of these shots you know, when I feel like I've, I've lit everything the way I want, then I would, I would load them all into Photoshop and do that light and blending mode. And then I just play with the sliders and pick the, uh, pick the images that I think look best and until I get a full piece that, that's really awesome. So let's do another one. I wanna uh, focus on these grapes over here. It's super easy. So if you're doing this at home, you have to be in a totally dark room? Uh, not totally dark. I mean, this room is far from totally dark. Um, I, but yeah, like when I do this kind of stuff at home, I typically wait till the sun goes down because we have a, a skylight in our living room and it, it doesn't really not lend itself well to doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, anywhere that's dark. Um, that's, that seems really dark to me. Blowing out a little bit on the apples, not enough to worry about. Let me, uh, let me open up the, go ahead. The same thing you need to be up on the stage and you need at, at your, at that side to get your green to the Yeah, okay. Let's do that. So where? Over here? You go up on the, on, on the back. Do you want to do it? Oh, careful. I'm all for audience participation. 
<laughs> yeah, but when I trip and fall, you'll laugh your ass. No, no. <laughs> I will. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, going. And I, I don't know if um, covering the flashlight is even necessary. Maybe don't cover it quite as much because it does seem a little dark. Look at this guy. He's like a master already. I have a wife. I practice a lot. <laughs> I can. I, I feel like you're gonna buy. You're gonna get enough on your camera here very soon. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Cool. Cool. All right, let's, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention too about light painting that, that makes it um, nice is because you are moving the light source back and forth, your shadows are constantly changing. Like to demonstrate, if I were to shine at, can, I, can you guys, oh wait, hold on. Can everybody see that shadow on the chair? So while you're light painting, you see how that shadow is moving. So over time, you're creating a soft shadow because it's never staying still. So it's gonna blend between all those different places. Whereas if you flash, bam, you're gonna have one shadow and it's gonna just be in one place and it's probably gonna be kind of ugly. You know, soft light is always nicer than hard light for this kind of stuff, I feel. Um, so that, that's just kind of another that popped into my head about the white uh, poster piece that she wrote there. Uh huh. Perhaps if you reflect it off and try and do that. Okay, let's try that. that. That'll probably help for. Uh... I, I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> well, I'm just curious to see how it turns out. Whoops. See, it's always dark. It's always dangerous. <laughs> Always breaking something. Okay, so we're going to try and bounce the light off that. And that should give us a nice, soft, I mean, we're essentially creating a soft box here. I wouldn't really call this light painting so much as just using a soft bounce card. I mean, but it's kind of just playing with the different, uh, the different tools and seeing what you come up with. This is probably going to be too bright. Let's, let's see what that does. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's it's really soft. And you can see that the white card and the reflection in the apple is, is much broader and much more appealing. But with all the overlay that you did, James, you're Oh, absolutely. Blend that absolutely. Out. And, and the other thing that, that I like to do when I'm doing a, a light paint is I, I do like to have one exposure where everything is lit. So, Let's say I shoot 10 beautiful pieces, you know, different uh, different angles and different lighting, and out of all 10, I miss a certain spot. If I have at least one where I kind of just overall with the entire scene, oh good God, um, then I know that if I have to, I can go in there and grab a piece where everything is lit. So let's see if I can do that with this kind of exposure here. So that, that should have just been a broad, that's probably gonna be blown out, maybe. Oh my goodness, we are at the Atomic <laughs> Museum. Okay, let's try that again. Let's, uh, let's not do that ever again. <laughs> see, these are all the pictures that I don't post. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every subject is different. Every situation is different. Let's see if that if that works. It's not like a seizure mode where it just flashes at you. Is this making sense, everybody? Is this? Yes. Oh my goodness! I just. Not true, almost knocked over your camera. All right, that is still completely blown out. The different pieces, so you're using the one as a shadow box, which is white. But what if you had a semi-dark card? Like, 
like instead of white, you had something that like a gray would or reflect a, it. Yeah. 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 You could. Would you? Would that get rid of the shine on the apple? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, it might be more subtle, but I think it's still going to be there. Okay, we're going to do this really quick this time. Let's see what that does. Well, good. I, I hope you guys are enjoying this to some degree. You know, you're going to have to give us a bit. Oh, absolutely. I let you eat the fruit, but it's very fake. <laughs> Yeah, that's still terrible. That is a really ugly highlight through there too. Does that light dim if you hold the button down? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's oh yeah, it does. It's got one mode that's a little dimmer. Hey Neil. Yes sir. What about uh, shoot through uh, you know fabric uh, light? Yeah, absolutely. Any anything diffuser? Yeah, anything to diffuse the light would work really well. I'm going to do another one where I just kind of paint some elements and uh, let's see what that looks like. So I mean, when you're when you're moving around and kind of feathering the light, and you're less likely to get that kind of blown out look that we were just getting. I, I really wanted to just kind of have one that was lit all the way. That really wasn't the way to do it, probably. That should be a lot nicer. It better be. Man, that's dark. Okay. Let's change some things here. I'm going to go. Let's go back to 30. Let's go to F10. Let's do it again. And if I had to pay for film, I'd be doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, you wouldn't even know if you'd made a mistake. I mean, I, it just it boggles my mind the, how people used to do things. I mean, I guess that was the true craft. They probably weren't painting fake apples. better. I still don't like those highlights and those are just something like the, in the apple, like in the green apple. I would probably just Photoshop that highlight out of there because it just, it's a little obnoxious. Um, let's try one diffuse. Let's see if I take, so we're going to, we're going to just try one with a big diffused thing over my light here. Actually, I think I have something in my bag that might work. How are we doing on time? You're okay. We started a little bit late. You probably have about 20 minutes. Oh, geez. What am I going to do for 20 minutes? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, that's not going to work at all. Never mind. This would work for a snoot, but not really for a diffuser. Uh, yeah. Yeah, do we have like a historical document I could use? Yeah. <laughs> you can get a napkin. Yeah, no, I'll just use one of these focus uh, focus things here. Let's try this. This will be fun. Should at least soften it a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down. I mean, I can see the highlights coming in as I'm doing it, so I'm not sure. This the uh, curved, glossy. Yeah, why did I bring such curvy, glossy things to shoot? I should have brought like clay or something. It's all about. <laughs> Jeez. You got any dulling spray? Yeah. Got to be hairspray in this place somewhere, right? 
atomic hairspray. <laughs> that might be too dark because we just killed so much of the light. Oh, it's so much nicer though. Whoever thought of the diffuser thing was a brilliant, brilliant person. Um, so talk about framing your shot before you start. I'm cutting off half the grave. I'm an idiot. Let's just remove this. Yeah, probably. I would have. Uh, I would have noticed that when I tried to line them up in the computer and went, huh. So since I've just moved everything, I'm going to refocus because. Achieved. Okay, I like the diffuser. So now I'm going to do for my stack. I'm going to just get my my slices that I wanted, so I can have more control. So I'm just going to kind of get this side. Really trying to move those shadows around so we don't create any really harsh things in once. Uh, hopefully my flashlight's not in the shot. I don't think it is. It takes forever for HDMI to go across. Eh, I can recover that. I think that's okay. Okay, let's get this side. So the real fun is when you're doing something like that skull shot, where it's like you've got, somebody's got to trigger the fog, somebody's got to set the fire, somebody's got to hit the flash, somebody's got to trigger the camera. And you all got to do it perfectly. That's a lot of fun, in the dark. too long. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty bad. It's not bad. Let me get the back here. So I, I used this same flashlight when we were doing the uh, the uh, aircraft hangar. Uh, I was surprised at how far it traveled and how bright it ended up turning out. Did you do the inside or the outside? The outside. Okay. <clears throat> who makes the box? Uh, it's a Costco light. I don't know who. I'll, I'll have to look. But I like it because it's got a, uh, a, you know, you can narrow the beam. You can turn it into more of a, you know, So it'll let you narrow it, or you can go really wide with it. Uh, it looks like garbage, but but you get the idea. It's kind of it's just a um, it's just a process where I I think it's it's much easier to have a bunch of different shots to work with than let's go real real. Oh, that might be in the shot. Just going to try and do a real low light across that fabric. Just see what that. Giving myself options. I got a stream with it on. You know, that we use out there for Churchill. The oh. one just took pictures in the second building is really lit them up. Oh, yeah. I can't be about Fort Churchill. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has pictures of Fort Churchill should post them in about a photographer <laughs> immediately. I, I kind of like the background on that, and again, you can tone that down. Um, but yeah, so if, if I were to roll through what I have right now, do I have enough to put something together? You know, you can kind of see, oh yeah, the camera definitely moved. Oh, and it moved again. Oh, and again. It looks like one of uh, those stop motion animations that you were making over there. 
Maybe I have a... Okay, well, when it stops moving around, you know, you can see how putting the different pieces together, you can just take little bits and pieces of each one if you want. Um, the other thing that you can certainly do is use uh, different colored lights. Um, let me grab some gels real quick. I can play with that. I think I have some gels in my bag. We should be light painting this person. She's scary. <laughs> wow. So you can order uh, gels on Amazon or buy them from camera stores, but because I'm cheap and want things immediately, and when the camera store is closed, you can also just go to like, you know, the pharmacy, the Rayleigh's, or whatever stores you have down here, and buy um, uh, like the school project dividers for folders that come in different colors. And that's what I did. I actually just bought those dividers and uh, cut them up to the size of the head of a speed light. And then just kind of take them together. You can kind of see. <laughs> super, super. I'm trying to talk into the flashlight. That was awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's do one with the, with the different colored gels here. So. Uh, okay. That now I'm trying to light the stuff with the mic. I just went like this. <laughs> Why can't I see that? Okay, this is confusing. Okay, we'll do that color on one side and the other color on the other. Let's see if I can do this all in one shot. All right, hold on. This may be the worst photo I've ever taken. It's going to come out right here. <laughs> or it'll be the best photo. Or the best. You never can tell. So that should be mildly entertaining. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, that just looks like poor white balance. Um, but you get the idea. You can play with different colors, different. Uh, different things. Um, yeah. I don't know uh, what else at this point. I would really, does anybody have any questions? Can we turn the lights back up? Um, so does that kind of all make sense, what we're, what we're doing as far as, you know, just basically painting our subject with light? Um, does anybody have any questions or thoughts or? Was there anybody that had any ideas that they wanted to try on the still life with the light? Yeah, I mean, anybody's welcome to come up and give it a whirl. Right. Yeah, I mean, the the best thing you can do is, if you are gonna be in your scene, is, is obviously to dress in dark clothes and then move as fast as you can. Um, right. Right. Um, you kind of do get a feel for it, and certainly if you're running around in your shot, like I know uh, when I'm using speed lights, they have a big red indicator on them as to when they're gonna fire. So if I'm running through the scene with a speed light, I make sure and put that red up to my body so that I don't see that light. Otherwise you get a pinpoint red stripe going through your shot. Um, 
but yeah, just, just moving as fast as you can. Um, some of the things that I've seen, like these shoes don't have them, but if you're wearing like athletic shoes that have the reflective stripes, man, those show up like crazy. You just have like this, this little wave of reflective uh, shoe going through your shot. Um, yeah, that's something you wouldn't think of when you're out there. Yeah, you just, you know, you see. <laughs> Um, you also have to worry about your shadow getting into the shot. Like if you're painting uh, with multiple people, you don't want to be in a spot where your shadow is going to come through one of the shots. Um, but yeah, I, I think the most fun is, is to just, I just love buildings. I, I just think that uh, painting buildings is, is just a, a lot of fun. I mean, I, would you guys like to see some of that stuff? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm struggling here, so oh my god, I closed this.